If you are going to court with a narcissist over custody, you need to be very familiar with the definition of best interest. Now, before I get started with this video, I want to make it clear that this video does not contain legal advice and it is for educational purposes only. You need to consult with your attorney for your case specifically. This video is intended to give you ideas and considerations for you to further research about your specific case. Best interest of the child is a legal term. While there is no standard definition across all 50 states, this term refers to the considerations that courts will take when deciding what type of services, actions, and orders will best serve a child, as well as who is best suited to take care of a child. Before you start thinking about your child specifically, you need to be familiar with what your state considers the minimum standards and requirements that a child must have in their care, as well as what factors the court takes into consideration when they decide who does those actions. This cannot just be your opinion on what happens to your child. The legal case that you are bringing into court must have a legal basis, a legal foundation. Your state's definition legally of what is considered best interest of the child is not the only factor that a court will consider when determining the outcome of your custody case. The age and gender of your child will also come into play, so understand that if you have a younger child, there's going to be more factors that go into creating a best interest case than if your child is typically 12 or older. Some states are different and they don't consider the child's input until they are 16, but generally speaking, at the age of 12, the court will consider what the child wants into the final court ordered decision. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what best interest means. Here are some questions for you to consider as you are thinking about creating a best interest for your situation. Who is the primary caretaker of the child? How old is your child? What is your child's current custodial environment like? How stable are any proposed new living arrangements? What is your relationship like with your child? Who else significantly affects your child's life when he or she is with you? What is motivating each party to ask for the custody arrangements that they are seeking? How is your child adjusted to his or her current environment? What parent is encouraging a frequent and meaningful relationship with the other parent? How will an award of sole legal custody affect the other parent's relationship with the child? Is there a history of domestic violence? Has there ever been any child abuse by either parent? Has either parent been convicted of sex offense or sexually violent offenses? Is there anyone living in the same household with either parent who has ever been convicted of child abuse, a sex offense, a sexually violent offense, or a violent offense? If the child is less than one years old, is he or she still being breastfed? What is the geographic distance between the parent's homes? Has the parent completed any required or voluntary parenting classes? What are the emotional, mental, and physical health conditions of all involved individuals? Will the proposed plan require that siblings, half-siblings, or step-siblings be separated? Does either parent have substance abuse issues? And is the other parent alienating you from your child? In the description of this video, you are going to find the links to two videos that I have done with attorney Wendy Hernandez, a renowned best interest attorney based in Arizona. I encourage you to watch those videos so that you understand the way that you formulate your case will be very important to whether or not best interest is legally upheld. One of the things that I have found often with my clients is that they have not processed all of the abuse, the trauma and betrayal that the narcissist has caused to them personally. And therefore, when they get into court, that energy or motivation for coming into court comes across as revenge to the judge. As I've mentioned before in several of my videos, the court system is riddled with other people who are narcissists. They have a tendency to think like your ex, the narcissist in this case. Your narcissistic ex will have an attorney who is also narcissistic, and it is very important that you give the judge a legal reason, not what you believe to be a logical one, but a legal reason to side and rule with you. This is the only way to start gaining ground in your case and, if necessary, overturn previous rulings and even appeal rulings in the appellate court. So just to be clear about what I am stating here is that you could have something that is happening that is illegal. However, if you do not present it that way in a legal manner, the judge will likely not rule in your favor because you didn't give them a legal reason to. This is not a battle of who did worse things or the most worse things. This is a legal system and this is not a justice system. You need to come into court ready to present a legal case. So what does this mean on a practical day-to-day -day basis of dealing with the narcissist and interacting with them? I want you to take a look at this graphic as an example. 
In this graphic, you'll see that everything that is going on with you and the narcissist and the narcissist and your child, and if you have more than one child, between the children needs to be framed through the lens of best interest. When the narcissist refuses to co-parent with you, your argument cannot be, they're not co-parenting with me, they're arguing with me. You need to tie the fact that they are not co-parenting with you over whatever issue it is back to the best interest of the child. You are an adult and the judge is not gonna look at what the narcissist is or isn't doing to you as enough reason to change any orders that are already established or even to grant you new ones. You need to tie everything the narcissist does or says or doesn't say or doesn't do back to how this is affecting your child. If the narcissist is refusing to message you back or to speak with you, that can't be presented in court as you're offended that they're not doing the right thing, that they're not co-parenting with you and you're making all of this effort. You need to frame it in a way that this lack of communication is affecting the child or the children in this case. I want to touch on one issue which is contempt right now really quick the narcissist is likely in contempt of a ton of court orders you need to make this into more than just about a contempt situation too many filings of contempt actually make it look like you're the unreasonable one again i'm not defending this system this system is completely broken but i do want you to understand that this is the system you are given and you need to know how to utilize it so that you can ultimately move on with your life and that you don't stay stuck in this legal system forever whenever you file a contempt motion an emergency motion a regular type of hearing a mediation or any other filing with the court it needs to be tied back to best interest the focus of why you are in court and what you are doing in court always always listen to me, always needs to be centered around getting the needs of your child met. This is one of the reasons why I encourage people to take their time when it comes to picking an attorney. You need to have an attorney who not only understands everything that you are going through with the narcissist, but is able to lay out a legal case for you to defend best interests of your child and not fold under the pressure of dealing with opposing counsel who will be a narcissist. Every judge in every district in every state will be different. 90% of the time what I have seen work for my clients is that you need to set up a strategy prior to going into court that you and your attorney are in complete agreement on. You've already decided what will constitute filing for an emergency motion. You've decided the goal or the outcome of the case and the best methods to get there. You understand the timeline that you are looking at when it comes to the legal process and you know what you need to do in order to help your attorney and your case. Once the strategy is already laid out and you are in agreement with it with your legal team, that's when you need to strike fast. From that moment, you need to be married to the plan and everything that you do, you need to be confident in. I've said it before, but I want to say it again. You are either your greatest asset or your greatest liability in your case. And if you have not gotten fully healed, you will start taking everything the narcissist does or doesn't do, every letter that they send or don't send personally. And this will affect your judgment and your clarity of reason. And ultimately, that affects your case. If you want people to take you seriously, you need to get healed so that you can communicate in a way that is not only appropriate, but that is in stark contrast to who the narcissist is trying to paint you as, especially when it comes to court. Your behavior needs to be so polar opposite of the narcissist and what they are saying that you are, that there is no opportunity for the narcissist to muddy the waters and essentially make it seem that you guys behave in the same manner. The narcissist defense will always be that you are trying to alienate them from the child, that you are doing everything to get revenge on them because you're angry or disappointed or hurt from something in the past. They will make you to look like you are vindictive, unstable, and even a threat. So you need to know that that's what the narcissist is going to do. They're going to do that. They are a narcissist. Don't be shocked when their behavior is exactly as you know they have always been when they get inside a courtroom. You need to focus on what is important to the case, and this means the foundation of your case. So number one, you need to heal your triggers. You need to break the trauma bond. These are non-negotiables before you get into court. The court process itself can be more traumatizing than the abuse that you went through with the narcissist, and you need to be prepared for what you are about to undertake when you go into the court system. My narcissistic detox intensive guarantees you to break the trauma bond because I don't just treat your body, so the biochemical connection that you have to the narcissist, nor do I just treat your mind, which include your toxic rumination, memories, but I also address this issue in the spirit. If you don't know that you are first dealing with the spirit, then you have already lost by the time you've stepped foot into the courtroom. If you're ready to get fully prepared for family court, I want you to text the word detox in your first name to 
888-900-9322 to see if you qualify to join. And if you're outside of the U.S., please send me an email with the word detox in your first name to my email address, which is info at themanifoldmind.com. Even if you don't want to be in court, once you are in the system, you are not leaving that system until they tell you you are done. You need to understand that this is the process. Way too many people assume that they are going to enter the justice system. They're just going to explain their situation and what's going on between them and the narcissist, let the judge hear their position, and then the judge is going to agree with them, and then they'll just be done with court. And this could not be further from the truth. When you have unrealistic expectations like that, you set yourself up for failure in the long run. So do the basic foundational work first so that you are ready to strike and start taking back your authority and destiny once you do get into court. Okay, let's go back to the graphic one more time. You should start getting an idea of how to track all the things that perhaps you've been overlooking or not mentioning because you didn't understand how these behaviors from the narcissist actually fit into your case. But if you go to my website, which is also linked in the description of this video, you can download for free an extensive court tracker that I developed, that I created, and it will help you stay on the same page as your attorney and make sure that there is no behavior that is done by the narcissist that is overlooked or forgotten about. Patterns of behavior demonstrate intent to the court. One final thing I want to say here about best interest is that you need to know the court system. You cannot outsource all of the work to your attorney. This is your case and these are your children. You need to know what legal definitions mean. You need to be aware of what your attorney is saying to opposing counsel. You need to be aware of what the next steps are in your case and why you're taking those steps. If you outsource the work in your case to your attorney, no matter how good they are, no matter how talented or virtuous they are, you are not going to get the outcome that you want in the time frame that you want because you aren't shouldering the responsibility for your case. Emailing your attorney 20 times a day is not helping your case. You need to have a very clear strategy on how your attorney works, what their strengths are, and how those have been expressed in their past court cases, and what you can do to add to your attorney's strengths in your case. These are some of the most basic and common behaviors that narcissists do with their co-parents. Okay, they won't take care of their kids when they are sick. This needs to go back to best interests of a child, who's the child's primary caretaker. When the other parent won't pay or is consistently late on child support, this can't just be about how you're sick of tracking down the narcissist and, and, and worrying about their behavior. You need to tie this back to how this is impacting your kid. When your co-parent is not showing up to parent-teacher conferences or to other things that are important to the decision-making process of what's best with your children. You need to track this in a way of not just not co-parenting with you, but how this is impacting your child's education. So everything that the narcissist does, doesn't do, says or doesn't say, needs to go back into feeding your case of best interest. Again, I have hours of training that are specifically dedicated to helping you prepare to go to court and organize your case inside my narcissistic detox intensive. So if, if you are truly ready to make a change right now, then I want you to apply right now to join. And if you think you might be experiencing a narcissistic collapse, then I want you to check out this video next and learn more about it, why it's so dangerous and what your next steps should be.